Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1 Tutorial 25A on accounting for non-strategic equity investments under IFRS Standard 9 which came into effect January 1st, 2018. This video tutorial is a supplemental resource to the Arnold and Kyle Open Educational Resource Text Volume 1 or any equivalent Canadian textbook emphasizing IFRS Standard 9. Tutorial 25B will cover accounting for non-strategic equity investments under ASPE. There are two basic learning objectives for this tutorial. First will be to review how to account for non-strategic equity investments classified as fair value through net income or FVNI under IFRS Standard 9. And two, how to account for non-strategic equity investments classified as fair value through other comprehensive income or FVOCI under IFRS Standard 9. This tutorial is based on the McCoy Inc. example, so please make sure that you download the correct accompanying file which contains the data and the requirements for McCoy Inc. There are two requirements uh, for this particular uh, problem, the second of which will be covered in tutorial 25B for uh, ASPE. This tutorial will focus on requirement 1 parts A and B. Assuming the company reports under IFRS 9, we need to prepare the necessary journal entries for all transactions from March 1st, 2020 to December 31st, 2021 under the following scenarios, the first of which will be that the investment is classified as FVNI. If you have the accompanying uh, data file, this is a snapshot of what you should see. In essence, on March 1st, 2020, McCoy decided to use some cash and purchased 5,000 shares in SPOC uh, Limited, and all of the information that we need, basically all the transactions we're going to account for are summarized in this table, as you see here. So we're going to have to go through each of these transactions over the next two fiscal years and journalize them accordingly. All right, so our first transaction date is March 1st, 2020 where McCoy makes a investment in SPOC, and based on the data, the company basically purchases 5,000 shares at $2.50 a share for a total of 12,500. So you're going to debit the FVNI investment for SPOC for 12,500. There's also a $500 brokerage or transaction fee that is to be expensed under IFRS for FVNI investments. So a debit transaction fees expense for $500, and then credit cash for $13,000. You can also set up a T account for the FVI investment, and you can see here we're going to input our first transaction as a debit to the T account for $12,500. The next transaction date is October 31st, 2020, where Spock pays a dividend, and McCoy will enter a journal entry to record the dividend, so a debit to cash for $1,300, and that $1,300 is calculated as 5,000 shares times 26 cents per share dividend, so that's $1,300 debit to cash and credit dividend income for $1,300. Because McCoy follows a standard calendar year end at December 31st, 2020, we need to adjust the value of the SPOC investment to the fair value. What we can do is we know that there are 5,000 shares and the current fair value at the end of the year is $2.85. And we know that the cost, what we paid for the shares is $2.50. So if we take the difference between those two, that's what's in the brackets here, 285 minus 250 times 5,000 shares, that means the value of the investment has increased by $1,750. So I'm going to debit the FVNI investment for SPOC account, and I'm going to credit an unrealized gain or loss on FVNI investment account. This is an income statement account because FVNI goes through net income, and at the same time, you can see in the T account, I've transferred the 1750 as a remeasurement. We're going to debit the T account, and the ending balance at the end of 2020 is $14,250. And you can actually check that. If we know that we have 5,000 shares and the fair value is $2.85, that means that the fair value of those shares should be $14,250. It is, which means that this remeasurement of 1750 is correct. Chronologically, the next event happens on July 31st, 2021, where McCoy sells 2,500 Spock shares. But prior to that, we have to make sure that we adjust to fair value the portion of the shares that are being disposed of. So prior to recording the sale on July 31st, 
I need to adjust the fair value of my shares. I'm selling 2,500 shares, and now the current fair value is $2.70 versus the carrying value at December 31st, 2020. Right, we adjusted the cost to the fair value at the end of the year, and up to this point, that was the new carrying value. The portion of the shares that we're selling have dropped from 285 to 270, or 15 cents times 2,500 shares, $375. I'm going to debit an unrealized gain or loss account on FVNI investments and credit the FVNI investment SPOC account, and that's what I have here, as a credit to the T account, the remeasurement prior to the sale. Now, once I've remeasured the shares, also on July 31st, 2021, I can record the actual sale of the shares. So the company will receive cash, so debit cash, and credit the investment account and 2,500 shares times the $2.70 that is received is 6,750. So debit cash, credit FVNI investments for SPOC, 6,750. And you can see here in the T account is a credit to the account for the partial sale. An alternative is to perform everything in one entry by recording a gain or loss on the sale instead. As you can see here, we could just debit cash for 6750 credit the FVNI investment account for the SPOC investments for the carrying value of 7125 and then debit the difference of 375 to a gain or loss on sale of FVNI investments account. Since nothing else happens between the July 31st and the intervening year end at December 31st, all we have to do is record the adjustment to fair value of the remaining SPOC shares. There are 2,500 shares left, and the new fair value is $3.50, as provided in the data, and that's an increase from the $2.85 carrying value at the end of 2020. So that's a $0.65 cent difference times 2,500 shares is $1,625, and that's an increase in the value of the remaining shares. We're going to debit the FVNI investment for SPOC account for $1,625 and credit the unrealized gain or loss account on FVNI investments for 1625 I'll go to my T account and I will make sure that I put the remeasurement as a debit into the T account and then I can calculate my new ending balance starting with the 14250 that was the balance at the end of 2020. I subtract the $375 partial remeasurement on the shares that were sold. Then I subtract the $6,750, which was the value of the shares that were sold on July 31st. And then add my uh, $1,625 remeasurement, gives me an ending balance of $8,750. I can confirm that that value is correct. I have 2,500 shares left at a fair value of $3.50. That is $8,750, so our work is correct. Now we'll move on to requirement B. In this case is to do exactly the same thing, all the necessary journal entries again, but this time that the investment is classified as fair value through other comprehensive income or FVOCI. March 1st, 2020, McCoy purchases shares in SPOC. It purchases 5,000 shares at $2.50 for 12,500 shares, and then there's the transaction fee. Now notice what happens here is that uh, the account name is different, of course, uh, because we're calling this FEOCI investments versus FENI investments, and where T account is FEOCI investments. The account name is different, but also notice that now the transaction fee is actually added to the FEOCI investment account. That's really important. Whereas under FVNI investments, the uh, transaction or brokerage fee were expensed separately. The only difference in this first journal entry then is the cash is still credited to 13000 But now, instead of only a 12500 debit to the FVOCI investment, we have another $500 for the transaction fee. The journal entry to record the dividend received from SPOC at October 31st is exactly the same. We will debit cash credit the dividend income for $1,300, which is 5,000 shares times 26 cents. No problem there. Then we have our intervening year ended December 31st. We need to record the fair value of the investments. We will debit FE OCI investments for SPOC for 1,250. So the amount doesn't change regardless of whether it's FE and I or FE OCI. But what does change here is now Instead of an unrealized gain or loss on FE&I investments, we have an unrealized gain or loss on FVOCI investments. 
this is a temporary account that will end up having to be closed to the permanent account you'll see in uh, the next slide. So the amount hasn't changed. We record the debit to our T account for $1,250, giving us an ending balance at the end of the year of $14,250, which is the same as it was uh, under the FE&I investment. Now is where we will see a significant difference or an addition to the FV OCI approach versus the FVNI approach. Once we have brought the investment or remeasured re it to its fair value at December 31st, 2020, and we did that by crediting because it was a gain, an unrealized gain or loss on FV OCI investments, and we said that was a temporary account. Well, the next thing we have to do, and that's what this uh, dark red box is here, is to close out that temporary unrealized gain or loss to a permanent account. So this AOCI, or Accumulated Other Comprehensive Income for FVOCI Investments. And I've also created a T account for it here. This exists as part of equity, right? It's a parking spot for unrealized gains and losses relating to FVOCI Investments. I need to zero out this $1,250 by debiting the unrealized gain on FV OCI investments. I'm going to credit the accumulated OCI on FV OCI investments. It is a mouthful. And what we end up with here is in my T account, here's the credit of $1,250 to the account that represents a closing entry and of course leaving a balance of $1,250. And that is the unrealized gain on that investment during 2020. And then July 31st, 2021 is when we sell the shares. But prior to the sale, we need to remeasure the portion of the shares that were sold. So the only difference between this method and the FENI approach is that we're going to debit an unrealized gain or loss account on FEI OCI investments instead of FVNI investments. So it's just the uh, different account name. So we're going to debit the unrealized gain or loss and credit the FVOCI investments for SPOC account for 375. So I put that in the T account here. And then on July 31st, we have the cash transactions. So we're going to debit cash and credit the FVOCI investments for SPOC for 67.50, and we include that as a credit to the FVOCI investment T account as well. Now, the other thing that's different here from FVNI approach, also at the same days, now that we've removed those shares, 2,500 shares, we need to move the portion of the unrealized gain that's included from this 1,250. Uh, we need to remove the gain on the shares that were sold. We're going to debit the AOCI account and credit retained earnings because what happens here is when we have a disposal, remove any balance of unrealized gain or loss sitting in the AOCI account and we put it to retained earnings. Now, where did this 250 come from? The proceeds on the shares or 2,500 shares at $2.70 is 67.50, no problem. Now, the original cost on the shares, there are 2,500 that were sold. Now, the original cost is $2.60. Well, watch out. You're one, you may be wondering, well, isn't the original cost $2.50? Well, remember that under this method, we have to add in that transaction fee. So the cost on the shares is actually $13,500. And if I divide that by 5,000 shares, that gives me $2.60 cost versus the actual $2.50. So that's where that $2.60 comes from. It's 13,500 total purchase amount divided by 5,000 shares, that's $2.60. The difference between the proceeds of 6,750 and the original cost, we can call that adjusted cost because of the transaction fee, means that we have to reclassify $250. So we have to remove $250 of that gain. So included in this $1,250 at the end of 2020, we need to reclassify or remove $250. So that's what's happening here by debiting the OCI account and crediting retained earnings. Then again, at December 31st, we have our intervening year end where we need to adjust the value of the remaining shares to their fair value. We're going to debit FE OCI Investment SPOC for $1,625 and credit unrealized gain or loss on FV OCI Investments. Again, that's that temporary account for $1,625. And remember that that was 2,500 shares times that 0.65 cent difference. 
And then as we did at the end of 2020, we need to close any balance in the unrealized gain or loss on FVOCI investment account. We have to close that to AOCI. And the amount that we're going to close here at the end of 2021 is 1,250. And you're wondering, well, wait a second, where do you get that from? If we go back to uh, all of our entries affecting the unrealized gain or loss, uh, when we had the disposal at July 31st, we had an unrealized loss because, and you can tell it's a loss because it's a debit of $375. And then when we had the revaluation at the end of the year, we had an unrealized gain of 1,625. Well, if I draw a big T, then what I have here is 1,625 in credits and 375 in debits, right? My credits are bigger than my debits, and the difference of 1625 minus 375 is 1250. And because the balance in the temporary account is 1250 credit, I need to debit the unrealized account for 1250, and therefore credit the AOCI for FVOCI investments for 1250. I look at my T account here in orange, I'm going to credit the account for 1250, leaving me with a balance at the end of 2021 of 2250. And as a check, I have 2,500 shares left. The difference of the fair value of 350 minus the adjusted cost of $2.60. So it's a 90 cent difference times 2,500 shares is $2,250, and everything is good. So now we'll just cover quickly some key points to remember. First, equity investments classified as uh, IFRS, FVNI, so fair value through net income, and IFRS, FVOCI are remeasured to their fair value at two points at year end and prior to a sale. And we saw that in both cases here. Second, any brokerage or transaction fees for equity investments classified as FVNI are expensed separately. Whereas transaction fees or brokerage fees for equity investments classified as fair value through other comprehensive income are added to the investment cost account and therefore affect the adjusted cost base of that particular investment. In addition, when FV OCI investments are sold, any realized gains and losses are reclassified from AOCI, so from the accumulated other comprehensive income account to retained earnings. And if only a portion of the investment is sold, and we saw that here, then only the corresponding portion of unrealized gains and losses in OCI are reclassified. So we have to take a portion of the previous uh, gain or loss up to the point of disposal of that particular portion that exists in the OCI balance was reclassified. During any particular fiscal year, of course, any unrealized gains and losses on remeasurements to fair value for OCI investments are credited or debited to a temporary OCI account. And we saw that to allow for proper reporting of other comprehensive income. Then at the end of each year, the temporary OCI accounts are closed to an accumulated OCI account, the AOCI, and that's a balance sheet account. So that concludes tutorial 25A. I hope you found it useful. If you would like to now cover equity investments under ASPE, you should proceed to tutorial 25B.